here we have another defiance action in the shop. This one's a little unique, uh, like any of their other models. Uh, this one happens to be the Tenacity 2.0, <clears throat> made by Defiance from Columbia Falls, Montana. This one's a little bit different <clears throat> uh, in the fact that we have um, a detachable Picatinny rail and a pinned recoil lug. So these are separate items. This is a little bit more uh, affordable, uh, one of their more affordable actions, uh, offerings from Defiance. And that's some of the corners that you kind of have to cut when you're a manufacturer and want to charge a little less for your products. <clears throat> you know, these pieces are made in mass production style and then they can just assemble them later. Still the same quality uh, appearance wise that I would expect from Defiance. Very nice finish, very good machining. <clears throat> Everything's deburred very well, smooth, no sharp corners or edges. So that's, that's nice to see. So before I dive in too far into this, um, apparently this has been discontinued already. I'm not sure the reasoning on that or why. Um, I'll have to call my contact over there at Defiance and see. But uh, just doing a little bit of research on this, it actually, their webpage says it's discontinued. <clears throat> so hopefully that's not because of a safety issue. Uh, like I said, I'm going to call Defiance and just kind of see. I reckon if it was a safety problem, they would have recalled them by now and, and um, made sure they're all shipped back. But uh, I'm just going to make sure on that. Uh, to the bolt, um, very nice black nitride finish on the bolt. Uh, spiral flute <clears throat> and your typical M16 style extractor and a spring-loaded ejector in the front of the bolt face. So the receiver is made of pre-hardened aircraft certified 416 stainless steel and drilled for a pinned recoil lug. So here's your pin holes for the lug and the lug itself has obviously pins in there. So that just helps everything line up <clears throat> very, very nicely. This is a service I can provide for Remington style receivers as well. Uh, I pin quite a few of these in a similar fashion. Sometimes you can just get away with one there. Uh, just depends on the customer and what they want. Uh, two would obviously give you an alignment guarantee. And then three is a little bit overkill, but I've done that as well. So if a guy wants three pins in there, hey, he could do that for you. The bolt itself is made of pre-hardened aircraft certified 4340 chrome molly with recessed bolt lugs, utilizing a mini M16 extractor and plunger ejector, as I mentioned earlier. The bolt lugs, I'm not sure what they mean by recessed. Recessed bolt lugs, I, okay. So that's your typical recessed breach. That's gotta be what that means. Just like a Remington would be, a recessed breach. Uh, moving on to the receiver again, the barrel threads are your typical one and one sixteenths by 16 TPI, just like a Remington 700 would be. It includes a stainless steel 20 MOA Picatinny scope mount attached with 840 screws and one eighth inch hardened dowel pins. Okay, let's just go ahead and take this off. Let's do a proper review. Nicely torqued. Okay, so you've got your typical 840 cap head style Torx screws. They even uh, ensured the, uh, to make one shorter in order for you're not bottoming out onto the barrel shank there uh, with that front screw, which is actually not a through hole. Wow, it's almost through. Kind of crazy. See that? Well, so anyway, just pull that straight up. And yes, there are definitely alignment pins <clears throat> in the receiver itself. 
that's a nice little touch. So that just guarantees and ensures that there's no movement in the rail uh, with uh, cartridge de detonation. And this one's going to be chambered in a 338 wind mag. So yes, we definitely need some recoil mitigation going on there for that. Don't want to get our uh, shear off screws or any craziness like that. Uh, that being said, I've never seen a non-pinned rail uh, be sheared off. <laughs> Unless, of course, the screws aren't tight or something like that. But as long as they're torqued and loctited, I've never seen that happen, even on 338 Lapua's and Rigby's and stuff like that, that are extremely recoil heavy. So that's that, we'll just leave that off. Okay, now we got that rail off. Back to the recoil lug. This is a, for whatever reason, a .253. <laughs> Not 250. Got to be 0.253, right? So let's let's go ahead and measure that. Let's confirm that. <laughs> I'll be damned. 0.253. I don't know which way this camera's built here, but uh, sure enough, um, that's kind of interesting. It's got to be different. So yes, um, 0.253 inch recoil lug made of hardened 416 stainless steel. Coming in at 1.2 ounces. So that's a pretty beefy, beefy actually feels heavier than 1.2 ounces, but I'll just go ahead and believe them because I don't have a scale right now. Action does not have a guaranteed headspace, which means you can't just go buy a prefit, screw it on and, and, and go off to your match and shoot. That means you need to have this done by a reputable gunsmith with proper machine tools and fixtures and wrenches and whatnot. Actions are available in medium and long. Medium's going to cover your uh, 6.5 PRCs and everything under that. And then the long actions, obviously, is magnums and long action cartridges. The two bolt face configurations they offer is a .480, which is a standard, and a .550, which is a little bit larger than a Magnum. So they're just letting you have some uh, room for expansion there. In the uh, Magnum size bolt face, go ahead and confirm that. So yeah, this is a 6.5 PRC cartridge, and that fits in the bolt face just fine. However, this is going to be a 338 wind mag, which is a belted mag. So let's use a belted mag. And same thing. Fits nicely into the bolt face, captured by the extractor, and then flies away with the ejector. Available in right and left hand configurations. Works with hinge four plates and center feed detachable magazines. And then the approximate weight for each complete action, which would be obviously everything you see here, plus the recoil lug, screws, pins, bolt, and all the uh, innards, is going to be two point, sorry, it's going to be two five, 25.9 ounces for the medium and 28.9 ounces for the long action. Complete action consists of stainless steel receiver, one piece 4340 chrome molly bolt, handle, knob, firing pin assembly with aluminum shroud and side bolt release. All material pre-hardened prior to machining to prevent changing tolerances during heat treat. The bolt is machined from one piece of pre-hardened 4340 chrome molly in one operation. The receiver is machined from one piece of pre-hardened 416 stainless steel. Wire EDM cut, full length lug, bolt ways result in smooth bolt operation. Oh yeah. Primary extraction design significantly increases initial extraction and ensures smooth bolt cycling. On the side you've got your typical bolt release and stop. Works like any of the other defiances. Okay, and then 
Uh, typical trigger cut there. The magazine cut <clears throat> on the bottom is going to be for a BDL for use with a hinge floor plate or a center feed magazine, like a Wyatt. And then the medium action features the AI AEW uh, detachable box mag cut. Now that being said, I've never really seen a BDL not work with a magazine system, with the exception of maybe a giant Magnum cartridge like a 338, 378 Weatherby mag or something like that. But that's really the only receiver I've had to modify to get to work like that. And that was also a Remington, so not sure. Never really had to modify one of these for that purpose. Okay. So as I mentioned, this guy's going to be chambered in 338 Winchester Magnum. We've got a giant truck axle of a barrel here. Um, apparently this guy is going to be testing stuff with this. So we got a Brux, one of my favorite barrels for sure. It's a uh, stainless steel, one in 9.3 twist. The uh, length on it is, looks like maybe 20, 20, eh, 24 inches probably. Tape measure, 24 inches. And then um, we have some PTG, uh, PTG finish chambering reamer with a live pilot on it. And with a 370 neck, no, sorry, 3705 neck and a 0.01 free bore. This guy wants the free bore extended about 20 thousandths of an inch. So we have a uni throater by PTG as well. These are pretty snazzy fancy tools that allow one to control the depth of the throat uh, by means of these knurled brass set screws. Generally a throater, you'll just feed that in. And you got to pay real good attention because you can't feel it really, but you can hear the wisping of those flutes as they cut. And you basically cut a little bit and then you measure and cut a little bit and once you've hit your dimension, then you're done kind of a foolproof way of not blowing past your desired throat depth. Other than that, uh, typical belted mag cartridge. So we've got our standard belted magazine, or standard belted magnum go and no-go gauges to check headspace at the end. So anyway, uh, being discontinued product, I just figured like, well, let's go ahead and review this because this may be the last one I ever see. And uh, I don't believe there's any other reviews out there right now on these, at least video reviews. Uh, again, it's your typical defiance, stripped down, bare bones action, right? So nothing is integral in this. Um, I do believe that this will be a very good, excellent shooter because of the barrel involved, the tooling and uh, everything like that. Just real quick, we can pull out the firing pin assembly just to make sure there's... Okay, so there's a little bit different thread pitch on the bolt shroud. Normally that's a Remington style too, but this is a much finer thread right there. Uh, nicely machined and configured firing pin assembly. Uh, Anti-binding spring on there, and your nicely polished cocking piece and uh, firing pin. And then for the ejector, that's just going to be a through pin there, just like any other. Knock that pin out, and the ejector will come out. The extractor as well is uh, held in by a roll pin right here. Uh, I, I like to leave these in when I'm doing this because that way I got a way to pull the headspace gauges out as I'm checking headspace. And they really don't affair, interfere with anything. So it just helps me when I'm doing the machine work. So we'll leave that in. All right, here we are with that Brux barrel for the 338 Win Mag on the Defiance Tenacity 2. So in my magnetic holder, I have my poopy tossed one ten thousandths dial indicator. So we've got 
Every little tick mark here is point zero 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 one. So one ten thousandths. So from zero to ten is one thousandths of an inch. From zero to halfway would be half thousandths, right? So this is one of the most sensitive indicate this is one of the most sensitive test indicators you can get, at least uh in the uh, realm of uh, affordability. So I've got the recoil lug on there just to, uh, I'm gonna need it for what I'm chambering here. So the pins are installed and it's uh, it was cleaned. We cleaned both surfaces uh, as good as I can. I don't have a lab, like a, a scientific lab clean room, <laughs> but it's as clean as I can get it. And I assembled it as, as, soon, as, as, as soon as I could, like right after wiping down and rinsing and then blowing, and I know the air compressor is going to blow a little, but you know, we're not in a lab controlled environment here, but as clean as I could get it, and it's immediately assembled uh, with acetone and everything like that. So I, I'm very confident there's no um, gap or anything or any kind of a debris in there between these two surfaces. All right, so, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start machining on this barrel.
All right, so in this case, the customer wants a little bit of extra free bore in the chamber. I think he said 20 thousandths of extra free bore. So the best way to do this is to have some way to measure the, your cut as you're cutting the throat. Uh, it's hard to describe, but it's very it's a very delicate operation, and you can't. It's not something you can really feel with the with the tail stock and the and the, um, the throating reamer itself. You can kind of hear it as it cuts, but you really never know exactly when it starts and exactly when it stops to give you an accurate, especially with twenty thousandths. That's not a whole lot. So, so what we're going to do is make an overall length gauge uh, similar to your Hornady <clears throat> Hornady style, which will give us a way to actually measure the depth of that bullet. So basically we'll take we'll we'll take the the standard throat or the standard chamber, slap our uh, gauge in, our custom gauge, and then measure where the bullet is actually stopping at. Then go in there with the uni throater and take a pass, a light pass, and then again measure and see how much that changed. And then we'll know, okay, so we need like 10 thousandths more or whatever. So this this might be kind of a neat thing to see. I don't I don't know. If you don't care, then skip it. It's up to you. But anyway, what we're gonna do, what I got here is a kinetic bullet puller. So this uses kinetic energy and it just takes it just it's a way to get the bullet out of the case without wrecking stuff. Right? So <clears throat> set the round right there. So this is I think this is a Lee um, variation. But nevertheless. You've got these little collars, so that, and they're all sized for different size cases. But this one's for a belted mag, like we got here. So you just put that on there, stick it in your kinetic hammer, secure the the ring, and then basically you're just going to hit it on something solid. And the kinetic energy of it stopping abruptly usually sends that bullet flying home or flying out of the case and dumping all the powder out. So. Let's see if that happens. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so unscrew this. Pull the case and see there's no more bullet. And there's all the powder that just dumped inside there. So we'll just go ahead and dump the powder out. There's the bullet. So there's your bullet, just a standard Spitzer style with a handle over on the, on the, on the bullet. Um, so this is just <clears throat> cheap hunting ammo. I just need a, I just, this is the part I'm wondering about. That's the part we want. But uh, for those of you who have not seen a case emptied, that's basically what it looks like. Okay, so we're done with the uh, kinetic hammer. We'll set that aside, put that away later. And now what we got to deal with is the primer. Got to get that primer out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where's my camera? How does it not focus? Focus. Got to get that primer out. <clears throat> Very easy way to do that. So the way primers work, they will not detonate unless you dent this surface here. So if I were to if I were to take this punch and hit it anywhere on that surface, it would pop the primer. But if you hit it from the back. And I've done this many, hundreds of times. So if you simply punch it out from this way, there's no danger of it actually going off on you. Okay, so I'm just going to give the bottom something to spit the primer out. And I got to make sure I'm hitting this thing right. Okay, there it goes. <clears throat> so now it's essentially a decapper. Okay, so now we got the primer out. And the primer went down here somewhere. So there's your primer. Right. So that could be reused. It's a lot, just a typical large rifle primer. We'll just stick that over there. Actually, let's take it out of the powder in case it does decide to do something silly. Okay, so next. <clears throat> I'm going to go grab the overall length gauge and uh, a couple other tools, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so for those of you that do not know what an overall length gauge is, 
Uh, it's basically a device like this. I made this. This is homemade. Um, this was before the, the mass produced uh, Hornady one was available. Uh, but basically, you've got a uh, rod, a long rod that goes into a shorter hollow rod uh, that has a lock screw here and some cuts in it <clears throat> and some threads on there. So basically, you take the case and we're going to thread the end of it so that it will actually screw on for that. And then that will allow us to insert a, a trial bullet, probably the one I just knocked out there. And then this little plunger deal will push that bullet out of the case. So this whole assembly will be inside the, uh, inside the chamber. And then we'll have a, a bullet <clears throat> to accurately measure how far that bullet goes in by means of a, uh, a caliper. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get, get, the, get the case prepared and then it'll be easier to show you how this works. So off camera, I had to hold this. I uh, actually used a half inch collet and just kind of snugly held that in place so that I could cut these lovely 5 16ths by 36. Threads. Five sixteenths to thirty-six. Okay, so our case is now modified. <clears throat> now you can buy these from Hornady. Already done, but uh, yeah, if you got a machine shop with taps and dies and everything like that, uh, you can make one yourself, no problem. Okay, so this simply, like you can see here, screws in and bottoms out right there on that shoulder. And now, the bottom of the case has this clearance cut. So, <clears throat> we'll probably just use this bullet, because I don't have a lot of 338s laying around. So you basically feed it in, so this whole thing will be stuck into the chamber. Bottomed out on, in this case, the belt. Go all the way in, until it stops. And then, you'll Feed this rod in, which pushes the actual bullet. <laughs> Hopefully not that deep, but uh, yeah, that will give us at least a way to measure the depth of that uh, throater as it cuts the throat. So we'll go a little, we'll take a little, we'll put this in, measure it. Oh, and the way you measure it, <clears throat> oh, we'll jam that back in. So say we're sitting right about there. So I've got a little feature on here to lock the lock the whole assembly. I'd use an Allen wrench for this proper, but uh, <clears throat> and then you'd take a, some calipers, and this gives you a way to actually measure measure the depth, or I'm sorry, the protrusion of your your bullet. And we're not taking we're not messing with an ogive measurement or anything crazy here. All we're doing is is measuring how far out the bullet is from the case which gives us a little bit more accurate way to check as we're cutting that throat. And it's funny how that just lined up at 3.4 right on the money. So that is ready for the job. Uh, like I said, I still got to cut the chamber and then throat. So I just wanted to get this prepared before that actually happened. Make sure it's all good and, and, and stuff. Now, if this bullet doesn't actually work, we have to go get one from the customer because as you can see, it's not very long. I highly doubt he's going to be using this picture uh, style bullet for anything in this rig. But anyway, you know, that's uh, that was just a way to to modify a case to use with the uh, overall length gauge, whether it's made by Hornady or whoever. Okay, so there's that. All right, so here we are chambering the 338 Win Mag. So what I've done here, I've obviously stop the machine. I've choked up the, the tailstock spindle and reset my carriage because that's where I stop for my uh, tailstock. The tailstock butts up against the carriage. That way I have a repeatable place to, to when I, I'm done with the feed, I pull out and clean. I know I'm coming back to the same spot. We're, gonna, we're running at 140 RPM.
Um, obviously, there's no power feed on the tailstock, so we'll kick it on. <clears throat> I always will squirt oil in the bore, and then I just liberally coat the uh, reamer itself. <clears throat> and then just gently feed in until we're bottomed out on the carriage right there. Lock it. And we'll proceed to feed in. And take about 20 to 30 thousandths. Um, so basically, I'll just blow all the chips off, clean this, blow all the stuff out of the chamber again, and just rinse and repeat until uh, we got... In this case, it's a belted magnum, so that's kind of easy. You've got a visual belt back here to, to check with. So once you see that belt cutting, you know you're almost there. Um, with a rimless bottleneck cartridge, you know, you got to pay attention and make sure you're not going too far in. So anyway, um, that's kind of like... A uh, quick and dirty example of how I use this reamer holder. Um, so once we're uh, we're done or close to being done, maybe the last pass, I'll I'll come back and film that. Okay, there it is. That's the go gauge, I hope. No go. No go is not going. has been achieved. Crack that loose. Okay, we're done with the reamer and everything. Um, so I think now we will throat this guy. Okay, so I just cut the throat. Um, Guy wanted 20 thousandths, so I opted to use the actual, uh, just do it by hand here with the, uh, the extended wrench. Reason for that is 
this thing will start cutting before you know it. If, if it's in a tailstock under power, like you can barely hear it and you can barely feel it. So by doing it by hand, I could actually set this uh, collar, the stop, um, way shallow, and then just each in <clears throat> creep up to the uh, to the dimension. So once I so I would play with this uh, micrometer stop basically. So I started somewhere out here, maybe took like five notches back until I finally felt it start cutting. And you can see there are some chips on the flutes. So it's cut 20 thousandths as they requested. So that's it, that's all we needed. So I'm playing with this uh, stop. You can see there's little hash marks on it. And I assume that was one thousandths per line, but I quickly found out that's actually two. So five dashes would be 10 and so forth. <clears throat> but you got what we got here is called a uni throater uh, made by PTG. Uh, it's a pretty clever design, so it's just it just cuts your throat, you know. So it's a full. You get plenty of throat here. So if a guy wants, you know, a half inch of free free bore, gosh, more maybe like an inch of free bore, you can have it. <laughs> and then there's there's your neck there. <clears throat> I don't see any reason why that's even on there, that feature, the neck. But hey, whatever, it is. Um, but in this configuration here, we're just cutting the throat. And like I said, 20 thousands. Guy wanted 20 thousands free war. So the reamer itself, um, I'm hoping I got this right, but the reamer itself had a free bore of 10 thousands. Focus, there it is. So you'll see right there, you got a 3.705 neck and a 010 free bore. 0.1, sorry, 0 0.010 free bore FB for the 338 wind mag finisher. So I added 20 on top of that. I really hope that's what they were talking about. Um, I assumed it was 20 thousandths more than the reamer is providing. Um, it looks like this guy ordered this reamer custom, so i don't not real sure why he didn't just get the free bore already on there, but hey, that's okay. I reckon he's probably testing this, and I'll probably cut the cut the throat back little by little, probably why I ordered this uh, long extension. Uh, but it doesn't take much. I mean, we're talking very, very little material cut. So you can do this by hand easily. And it's already got a live pilot, so you can't really screw it up. I suppose if you like bend, if y'all were pulling back on it as you turned or something, but the barrel was still in the chuck. <laughs> When I did this, and I just I spun the chuck by hand, and then just fed that, fed that in, until I could feel it. <clears throat> so it's like you'll feel it, kind of cutting, or cutting <laughs> for real. Um, then I took my dummy round here uh, that I've threaded in the back for the overall length gauge, and uh, basically pulled this bullet out real long and then pushed it in to the cartridge until it stopped on the belt where it head spaces thusly pushing this bullet back into the case so i took a baseline measurement before anything and measured uh three inches what was it like i said i'm not going off the o jive or anything like that i don't, I don't care about any of that so we started at three yeah, it was 3.230 was the original chamber measured just by this quick and dirty way to check your uh, protrusion of the, the bullet. So, like I said, I pulled this out. I took a cut with the, with the uni throater, uh, and I got uh, an extra 10. So it measured... Uh, it was to, yeah, went to 40, uh, 3.240. So then I knew that's when I figured out, oh, the tick marks are actually two thousands per. So I dialed in another five and ended up right around 
50. Maybe a little more, but uh, that's where I ended up. That's 20 thousandths over what it originally was. So quick and easy operation, you just gotta be real careful. You know, you can't go too much. You go too much, well, shoot, you gotta push the whole thing back and start again. And not too hard to correct, but you're gonna lose a little bit of barrel length. And 10 thousands isn't that much, but uh, uh, I don't wanna do more work than you have to. Um, and then another interesting thing was it had just a standard factory live round. This would not fit. Um, so it was a very, very tight free bore. And uh, now, when I put the, with the extra 20, this fits, but it's still snug. So that's telling me the bullet's jammed up into the land. So it didn't pull the, didn't pull the bullet out when I extracted it, so that's a good sign. Uh, but I feel like uh, this is a very uh, short free bore. Um, a lot of guys like that, so that's what, uh, that's what we're doing. So anyway, uh, kind of neat little thing. Um, fortunately, I didn't get any footage of it, but I mean, trust me, it was it took two seconds. So you just got to envision, oh, okay, I fed this in, and I held it back here, and I spun the chuck. And I, I felt and heard as I pushed, and it didn't take much force at all. I, I feel like this is better off done by hand. Now, if there's a bunch of freeboard to cut out or whatever, then yeah, use your use the tail stock and the power feed. But, uh, but yeah, that's how the the uni throater works by PTG. Pretty clever little cutter there. Right. Okay. So that job's done. Um, all that's left is to chamfer, like like I always do, chamfer the uh, the mouth of the chamber and the recess. Just. Uh, 45 degree pass until that sharp edge is cut off and and then I'll go in there and polish. But yeah, this chamber's done and the free bore is cut to the requested um, specification. So now, like I said, I'll just finish up the barrel on this end. Um, then there'll be, uh, he wants a crown on the other end on the muzzle, obviously. Uh, then we'll put it back together and test fire it <clears throat> and deliver it back hopefully tomorrow. So rock on. Okay, there it is, a completed breech, polished. Now some of you may be wondering why, why didn't you thread it all the way to the shoulder there, Mr. Gunsmith? You should have put threads all the way to the back. Well, no, that's not necessary. <clears throat> Nicely polished on the inside. Some of that is just schmutz still on there. I did clean it off with some alcohol, but. So as far as this goes here, well, it's just like, kind of like a Remington, this Tenacity 2.0, Yuki. The Tenacity 2.0 has a separate recoil lock, as well as a relief cut on the inside there. See that? So yeah, there's about 350 thousandths of uh, nothing. <clears throat> so there's no point in threading all the way there. So just like a Remington, you want the recoil lug to be, you know, sitting on material, not just kind of loose, hanging out in the wind. You know, so same concept. So that's all that is. Just, uh, before you leave a comment about that, that's uh, that's the reason for that. The defiance. Tennessee 2.0. And a Brux truck axle barrel. With a nice 11 degree crown. With a 60 degree internal crown to crown it off nicely. I just love big heavy guns like this, big heavy rifles. So there we go. Another rifle is born. And that's about it. Uh, 
So again, the defiance, the defiance, tenacity, 2.0. No longer available, so don't, uh, don't try to go buy it because you probably won't find it. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, just a real quick review, uh, overview on this special action that we have here in the shop. Don't forget to like the video if you do. That really helps us uh, with the algorithms of YouTube. Uh, leave a comment if there's something you're kind of wondering about these. Uh, I'll do my best to answer you. And uh, as always, subscribe to the channel. That also helps us uh, grow in our journey here and uh, get us a little bit more YouTube love. And that helps the entire community. Again, thank you for watching and uh, see you guys later.